Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and a Frexum Bank. Welcome to Africa Invested Today, I'm Zylan. We start today's bulletin with politics and economy. Kenyans are excited by the news that former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan is scheduled to arrive in Nairobi this Sunday. Mr. Annan is expected to hold discussions with both President Mawai Kabaki and Prime Minister Raila Odinga to push for much-needed reforms. He was instrumental in bringing about the agreement that led to the formation of Kenya's unity government. The president of Zambia, Rupia Buzani Banda, concluded on Thursday an official visit to Cuba at the invitation of his counterpart, Raul Castro. Buzani was seen off at the Jose Marti International Airport by Deputy Foreign Minister Ana Teresita Gonzalez Fraga. The African leader held official talks with Raul, and he and his accompanying delegation paid tribute to Cuban national hero Jose Marti and to several African independence heroes. In addition, the Zambian head of state bestowed the Eagle Order of Zambia um, in its first degree on the leader of the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro. We'll be back after the break with news on companies and markets. Stay with us. Redefining energy means redefining life. At the Petroleum, Oil and Gas Corporation of South Africa, our commitment to greater innovation and greener fuels has made us pioneers in the field of gas to liquids technology. It has also earned us worldwide recognition for producing the cleanest fuels through environmentally friendly processes. That's how we've become the international leader in diesel technology. Through pure innovation, pure energy, pure brilliance. In companies and markets now, Moroccan conglomerate ONA is waiting for the murky economic outlook to clear before moving to streamline its very varied businesses, its chief executive said on Thursday. ONA has stakes in a range of profitable Moroccan industries, from financial services to fisheries, cobalt mining, car retail and supermarkets. It is controlled by the Moroccan royal family via holding company SNI. While cash is pouring in from businesses such as banking, retail and dairy goods, others like mining have struggled for years. And CEO Mutasim Balghazi says he wants to focus ONA's portfolio on the most promising sectors. Bitvis yesterday reported huge interest from investors in the listing of its division, Bitvis Namibia, with the group fielding numerous investment inquiries this week. The listing later this month would leave the diversified parent company with a majority stake in the division. Bitvis Financial Director David Cleesby told Business Day um, yesterday the planned listing on the Namibian Stock Exchange later this month intended to accommodate black economic empowerment and other local investors. We'll be back after the break. Stay with us. Afrexum Bank is Africa's leading trade finance bank, an organization dedicated to promoting African trade through credit, risk-bearing and advisory services. We pride ourselves on having local presence throughout the continent and are committed to extending our award-winning trade and project finance programs to unlock private sector development continent-wide. We invite you to become a part of our vision for a strong Africa in a changing world. If you trade within Africa, contact us to support you. In banking and finance news, Morocco's Monetary Policy Council has cut commercial banks' reserve rate by 2.0 percent points to 8 percent, a 50-year low to ease a liquidity crunch, um, the country's central bank said on Thursday. The North African Kingdom Central Bank Governor Abdilatif Johari said the council could lower the reserve rate further when it meets later in December. Meanwhile, the council decided to keep the benchmark interest rate at 3.25%, citing the steady slowdown of inflation. The Central Bank of Nigeria has invited chairman and managing directors of five banks to a meeting today in Abuja following the outcome of the last audit conducted on the remaining 14 banks in the country. The audit has determined the fi that five banks may have more questions to answer. This day learned that three of the MDs of the five banks may be removed today at the meeting while the remaining two may stay because their banks have liquidity but lack capital adequacy. The MDs that may be axed are those of Bank PHB and Springbank. The decision on Equatorial Trust Bank could not be ascertained by last night. 
we'll have more business news after the break. Africa Investor, the leading African investment magazine, is essential reading for investors in Africa, filled with the very latest in pan-African investment and finance news. In addition, log on to africa-investor.com to find out more about our exciting capital market infrastructure and tourism events, and our long-standing investable Africa Investor 100 Index Series, which tracks over $600 billion of African equities. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor. In infrastructure news now, Africa Development Fund has approved a 244 billion shillings loan to finance the road sector support Project 3 in Uganda. The project aimed at improving the road access in the rural areas of western Uganda, covering Kihura, uh, Ibanda and Kamwenga districts will also assist in poverty reduction. A communication from the ADF Board of Directors said the main components of the project include civil works for upgrading to a bitumen standard, the 140 43 kilometer stretch of Nkahita, Ibanda, and Kamwenga Road with 6 meters carriageway and 1.5 shoulders on each side. The government of Rwanda is in final talks with SECOM to bring down the prices of the international bandwidth from $2,700 to $50 for each megabyte per second every month. SECOM is the company that owns the 1.28 terabytes per second capacity undersea cable that links southern and the East Africa to Europe and Asia via the Red Sea, Egypt and the Mediterranean. The company is delivering open access to capacity and landing infrastructure which is expected to drive international backbone prices down by 90 percent. Augustin Inyako, the Karisimbi project coordinator, said that the distribution of international bandwidth by terrestrial country to the current satellites will bring down the cost of communications tremendously. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Zylan and the team at Africa Invested Today. Have a look at our website for any more information at www.africa-investor.com. Bye for now. Africa Investor Today is proudly brought to you in association with Petro SA and Afrexum Bank.